Have you ever collected lots and lots of data for an image and then you go to process it and all of a sudden you find that the star field is just completely overpowering the image? Well today I'm going to show you an easy way to do star reduction. What's up beardos? And today I'm going to show you how to do a super easy way to do star reduction. I've actually been using this for almost two years now. Actually, my first image that I used this on was my um, Western Veil Nebula. And in the Western Veil Nebula, if you uh, see it, it's got like a really overpowering star field. Um, and so I wanted an easy way to do it. And there's a lot of techniques out there. Um, there's two really popular ones. One uses something called morphological transformation, which basically uh, shrinks the, uh, the, the stars down. And another really popular one is Adam Block's Star De-Emphasis. The, Adam, the Star De-Emphasis one, uh, it's awesome. It actually works really well, um, but it takes a lot of steps to actually do it, and uh, it's not uh, an easy uh, kind of process to go through. So I was looking for an easier way. I was messing around with Starnet, uh, I had gotten some tips from uh, a, a group that I belong to um, and uh, in experimenting I kind of came up with this technique. Now I know there's at least one other person using this, um, Crazed Creations, but I really haven't seen anybody else who's using this technique uh, or at least they haven't put out the information. So with that, let me show you how the process works. Okay, so let's get going. So what I'm going to show you is how to do the star reduction in Photoshop. I'm going to use a tool called Star Exterminator to separate the stars from the nebula. And then we'll be able to work on those independently. Uh, and um, I'll show you how I do the star reduction. So I have an image here that works really well with this technique. Uh, this technique it works well with images that have a lot of nebula. So you can see here, there's a lot of nebulosity, even in the areas that are darker over here, you can see a lot of hydrogen alpha. It doesn't work as well. Like I have the Eastern veil, which doesn't have as much nebulosity in the, in the capture and it doesn't work as well. You get some ringing around the, the stars, but in an image like this, or if you have uh, an image that has lots of nebulosity in it, this technique works really well. Uh, additionally, it works well on images that have a huge star field like this one. Um, this is uh, the Western Veil Nebula. And uh, what we'll do first is we'll uh, remove the stars. Now, uh, I will be putting up an action that will do this, uh, this uh, star mask action. It'll be on my website probably by the time you see this video. But for right now, I'll go through the manual steps and just show you how easy it is to do that. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, duplicate my background layer and I am going to rename it original. Um, and uh, then I'm going to duplicate that one and I'll call this starless. And I will run the star ex exterminator tool. Now this is a paid plugin um, so if you don't want to use it, uh, I've for the longest time used Starnet instead. So you can totally use Starnet. Uh, I use Photoshop and PixInsight uh, interchangeably a lot. So um, this definitely works with Starnet as well. You just need to create a star mask. So I'll go to RC Astro and then Star Exterminator, and then I will run it. And this will eliminate the stars. So when we come back, I'll show you the starless image. Okay, almost done here. Okay, so now we have the starless image and you can see because of the fact that I have all this nebulosity, um, the reason why this works well on these types of images is because when the, star, um, the, the stars are removed, it has to estimate from the area around it what the background should be. And because there's so much nebula here, um, you can see it had pretty much an easy job doing that. Uh, there are areas of that are really, uh, you know, have really bad artifacts like this area. And typically with that, I, I'll do some special masking because it's it's not even worth it to try to to resolve that. But um, 
that's not the point of this video. Um, let's go through how to create a star mask first, where you just have the stars. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the original layer and duplicate the stars layer or the star list layer. And what I will do is I will convert this to a difference. So here you'll just select difference and that will give you the difference between the layer that you have and the layer underneath. And then we'll just merge them down with control E. Uh, and then I'll rename this as star mask. And then you will want to change the blending mode to linear dodge. And so now you can see that I have, I can turn the stars on and off at will, which is really cool. And uh, this allows me to also work on these independently. So here we can add a curves layer and I can bring up, you know, I can change the curves just on the nebula. I move this down here, I'll turn the, the stars off and just bring up the curves just on the nebula here um, and, you know, darken it up a bit. And maybe I want to bring out some of this blue here. I can add another curves layer and maybe just work on the blue, you know. in this area and maybe I want to add a little bit of saturation I typically don't use saturation I use vibrance and so I can bump that up a little bit so now I have my stars now one of the problems that you have with images like this especially of the um, the veil nebula is this you know the stars can be way overpowering and they, you can see how much of like the nebula you're really missing. So especially these smaller stars, we want to try to reduce them. So once you have your, um, your linear dodge layer, what I like to do is add um, either a curves layer or a lo levels layer. I'll, I'll typically start with a levels layer. And uh, on Windows, you just hit Control-Alt-G and you'll see this little arrow here. So you see this little arrow. So what this is telling us is that this level layer is only applied to the star mask. And now I can play with the midtones and start to reduce the stars. And you can see it almost instantaneously that the stars are getting reduced. So that's one way to, to, to reduce the, star, uh, the stars uh, on the image. And you can see it's such an easy way to do it. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this star looks terrible. So what you can do here is you can just go into the mask level and I could put a circle around here. And if I fill it with black, what that will do is that won't apply the levels to that area because I've masked it off. But typically you don't want to do that because you get this. I don't know if you notice it, but if you zoom in, you can see that there's like a circle. So what you want to do is you can hit alt and then click on the layer and you can see here the mask. And then what you can do is you just give it a, a blur, like a Gaussian blur. And that'll apply it and it'll get applied um, so that it's more smoothed out. So there we go. That's that's it. That's that's how easy it is to reduce stars in in Photoshop. Levels is kind of a it's a more harsh way of doing it. Uh, you can also apply curves. So if I add a curves layer here, I can turn off the levels layer. So you can see here, and I can just bring them down, and it'll bring down the 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 stars, and so they're not so overpowering and then similarly I can go in here copy this and then paste it in here so that it doesn't get applied to that um, really bright star in, in this image and so you get this image that's much more where this you know the stars are much more toned down they're not so overpowering you do see a lot of the nebula and uh, uh, it's just super easy way I find it way easier than morphological t transformation or uh, atom blocks uh, start de-emphasis that's it
that's how easy it is to do star reduction uh, using this technique. It's way easier than the other um, the other methods that I've seen out there. Certainly a lot easier than the ones that I've seen in PixInsight. I do recommend you check out the Craze Creations uh, channel, which has a the, pretty much the same um, methodology. But he does use minimize instead of like levels and curves, which gives more of an effect. It, it, it's more like the morphological transformation. Um, but I like how he did that, and he, he goes through a really good explanation. Um, I personally don't use that. I mainly use levels and curves. And like I said, it doesn't work with all images. So in some images, especially when there's a lot of, uh, you know, the nebula might be small in the field of view, and there's a lot of space, you could get ringing around the stars. So it certainly doesn't work in all situations. But when it does, it works out really, uh, really great. Um, and it's certainly, it's a great way to actually do RGB stars as well. Um, I'll put a link to my final Western Veil vale Nebula uh, in the description below and you can take a look at what the final result looked like. If you like videos like these definitely hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support and uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see definitely put it in the comments and I, I will try to make videos on those. That's it. Thank you. Bye.